Hi guys and welcome to my new office. It's time for you to finally see what goes on behind the scenes. Everything that you see here is exactly the way it is every single day. I didn't put any extra stuff in the room or anything like that to make it look nicer. Nope, what you see is what you get. The only thing that I did was um, a truly big challenge for me and it took me a lot of time and effort. And it was a very long and demanding process, but I finally managed to clean my office. All by myself and especially for you. But if you still want to laugh about all the dust, then just watch the video in 4K and I'm sure that you will be able to find some. When I started Far of Gaming, the only thing that I had was a laptop, a mouse, a headset and a microphone. And everything is still right here today on my desk. I started out with the laptop that you see here on the left. It's an Asus G750JZ and it has a GTX 880M inside. I still use it every single day and this is the one that I take with me when I travel. It's a great laptop and I never had any issues. The problem that I have today is that it can't run Battlefield 1 the way I want it. So I'm in the market for a new laptop. Next to this laptop is a Razer Dead Adder. I don't think that this mouse needs an introduction because some of you are using it at this very moment. On my wish list for Christmas I asked for the new version, the Dead Adder Elite. And I really hope that I will be able to show you that one in the near future. All of my mouse mats are from Steel Series because they produce one of the better mouse mats out there. This one is the QCK and the two underneath my mouse and keyboard are QCK heavy mouse mats. You might wonder why I didn't use the XXL instead because it will be cheaper and you will end up covering the same surface area. Well that one isn't as thick as the QCK heavy and I really feel the difference after a longer gaming session. Now that we are here, let's check out the mouse and the keyboard. These two things are arguably the most important items for a gamer, together with a headset but that is for later. These two things can really give you an advantage. There is a basic logic behind all of this, if you can click faster, you will kill faster. That's how easy it is and the Logitech G900 Kia Spectrum is probably the best mouse out there at this very moment. It's really great at pointing at somebody's head. Basically it's a wireless mouse that performed better than every other wired mouse out there when it was released. And you don't have to drag the cable around all over your mouse mat when you go for another kill streak. The great thing about these mice is that one day you can play with a dead adder and the next day you can play with a Kia Spectrum without feeling a big difference. The dead adder weighs 105 grams and the Kia Spectrum weighs 107 grams. The problem with the dead adder is that you're still dragging around that cable. The keyboard is a K70 RGB rapid fire and for me this turned out to be the best keyboard on the market. It has a super fast actuation time and it takes almost zero effort to press down the keys. I have to say that it's not the best for typing but that's not why you buy this keyboard. I mean who does that these days? Buy a keyboard for typing, I mean why would you do that? If you are into special lighting effects then you're going to love this keyboard as well. Personally I never use it because I don't want to see that amazing light show when I'm trying to kill somebody. The only light show that I want to see is the one on my screen because it usually means that somebody is trying to kill me. I bought it about a year ago and it's still one of the better monitors out there. The RG Swift PG279Q. 27 inches of Battlefield 1 overclockable to 165Hz, but I recommend to select 144 instead because the performance is just better. When I started with YouTube I used an Audio Technica 802020 USB. It's a cardioid condenser USB microphone. In other words, it records your voice. It's easy and it's good, you plug it in and it works. In the beginning of this year I wanted to improve the audio quality of my videos and I decided to buy a better microphone. I did my research and I ended up with a Neumann TLM103. It's a large diaphragm cardioid condenser mic and to my surprise it records your voice as well. The only problem is that you need an audio interface because it doesn't come with USB. So say hello to the RME Babyface Pro. It's a brilliant audio interface and it allows me to send my audio wherever I need it. Every gamer needs good headphones, because it can be beneficial when you're able to hear the guy who's trying to sneak up to you. And for that I have the Sennheiser HD 800S. I still store it in a box every day after I use it, maybe because I like the box so much, I don't know. What I do know is that this thing is amazing. The audio quality is great and the positional audio is probably one of the best out there. Besides my mouse and keyboard, I sometimes use the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. I used it for hundreds of hours in Battlefield 2 because I loved flying in that game. In Battlefield 1 I only used it twice. I don't get the same satisfaction after flying because for me it was way better in Battlefield 2. The only other thing that sits on my desk is a PlayStation 4 and I'm sure that you know what that thing does. The desk itself was custom made but it's not completely finished yet. I had it custom made because I like to have a little bit more space. I'm sure that you've seen the desk of one of your friends and there is so much stuff on there that he barely has space for himself. What I love about this desk is that it can go up. 
I get tired of sitting down pretty fast, so if I want to stand up and play at the same time, then I just have to press one of the buttons. I do this also for health reasons, because as you know it's not that good to sit down for too long. But then I end up playing much longer than I normally would, so it cancels out some of the health benefits. But I keep telling myself that it's better, so it's better, okay? The armrests are there to give more support, and it feels a lot nicer to be honest. It started with the fact that the chair didn't agree with the desk. At least the armrests of the chair didn't agree with the desk. But now I don't think that I will be using any armrests anymore that come with the chair. The other ones are just so much better. On my other desk I still keep my objective O2. I haven't used it since Rainbow Six Siege because I stopped gaming on my laptop after that. Audio quality is awesome but I only use it with the Audio Technica 8700X. This is the headset that I take with me when I travel and yes, I had to use the trick with the rubber band because it won't stay on my ears otherwise. This is pretty much all the stuff that I have lying around every day, so let's finally check out the gaming PC. I assembled most of it in August, but the case arrived late, and of course I couldn't wait so I was gaming on my motherboard tray for more than a month. Who needs a case anyway, right? I have to tell you that it was the first time that I assembled the PC myself. That is why the cable management is so awesome and perfect. I was lucky enough to live next to a guy who knew everything about computers so I never had to assemble anything myself. He loved to do it so why not let him have his fun. I wanted to create 2k high quality videos for you and I still want to be able to do that with this PC next year and maybe even the year after that. So I chose to get an RG Strix GTX 1080 OAG Gaming. Not only did I get one, against my better judgement I chose to get two. This all sounds great right, a beast of a machine. The only problem is that the guys at Nvidia or at Tice, I still don't know who to blame exactly, they still haven't figured out how to get SLI to work properly in Battlefield 1. If you don't own the 1080 yet, then you probably weren't aware of the fact that everybody who has an SLI setup has major issues. Down to a point that you can't even play the game anymore. I'm now at the point where I'm a bit reluctant to install a new driver because the last ones only seem to make things worse. So basically I'm down to only one card. By average on this card I get between 100 and 110 frames per second in Battlefield 1 in 4040p and with ultra settings. Right now I can recommend you to get one of these cards but I will never recommend you to get a second one, at least not at this point. Some of you know a whole lot more about computers than I do and you're probably dying to know the specs. And yes, I know that the power supply is overkill, but I have my reasons. For the motherboard, I choose to get the RG Rampage 5 Edition 10. I included an Intel i7-6900K and 64GB of G-Skill DDR4-3200. An Intel 750 series 1.2TB SSD, a Samsung 950 Pro 512GB M.2 SSD, a Western Digital Black of 6TB, a Corsair H115i, a Corsair AX1500i and I also installed an Intel X540 T2. The case is a Be Quiet Torque Base Pro 900. I love this computer. Besides the SLI, everything works. It's lightning fast and it allows me to make high quality videos for you. On top of that, Battlefield 1 in 2K with ultra settings is just amazing. If you're into racing games, then you're going to like this thing. A Trustmaster T300 RS together with a Wheelstand Pro. It gives you so much more control and satisfaction when you're racing around the track. And that's basically it. I have some more stuff in the closet, but it's there for a reason. I'm not going to take it out because I just don't use it anymore. I hope that you liked what you saw. If you're interested in buying something yourself or as a present for somebody else, then check out the video description. I will post the full name together with a link to Amazon. Just for info, I will get a small percentage when you buy an item through this link and by doing so you can support the channel. But it doesn't make your purchase more